we have seven very distinguished guests on the, on the panel here. I can think of no other club that could put such a star-studded list of people on a stage like this, knowing that they're all going to be fluent, knowing that they've all got stories to tell, and I can tell you my problem will be holding them in check, keeping them in time, and making sure you get to the pubs before they close in Abingdon. First of all, we have the most senior surviving person from the engineering and design team at Abingdon, Don Hayter, very much involved with the MGB. Seeing a group like this, who are the uh, people keeping the MGB alive and running in this world uh, today, um, and I think when I drew the darn thing and started filling the car park up and hoping they would be shipped out, we had absolutely no idea where the end result was going to be. And uh, my work on the car was always look forward to going to work and doing the next bit. And the car company, MG Car Company, was a super place to work. And uh, having good work people with good contacts everywhere and, and super bosses at the time that made all the difference to us. And uh, I'm entirely happy that I was there and I've survived all these years later. A terrible trio who will undoubtedly like to cause trouble at some time during the evening, and they probably will. Uh, Dan Green, Peter Browning, who was competitions manager for three years, and Bill Price, who was deputy to not one, but I believe to three, or was it even four, competition managers at Abingdon. They are the terrible trio who did marvellous things with MGBs in the workshops just over there. One of the very important things that John Thornley instilled in Stuart and, and me was that the cars that we competed with, and we, particularly the MGs, they should be not very far removed from the cars that you guys could buy. And he was very, very insistent <coughs> that, that that was the situation. There were ideas for, for all sorts of strange MG race cars, perhaps, but certainly he wanted to see the cars racing. And it was... One word, I think, sums up the success of the MGB racing and, I believe, for the success which you guys who own the car is reliability. There is no way when we went racing at Sebring against the Chaparrales, the Ferraris and, and all these Porsches and things like that we could be beat them, the only way we could get into the top ten or get a class board was being there at the finish. And the fact that the cars went for 12 hours, 24 hours at Le Mans, and we'll talk about 84 hours of the marathon later on, mm. is that the MGB just kept on going. On the right, two of my very favourite Irishmen, both of whom with a considerable competition record uh, in rallying particularly and in racing and rallying for both of them. Uh, they're both so well known. All I need to say is Paddy Hopkirk and Alec Poole. I think the, the team, the, the Abingdon, the Abingdon atmosphere, the team building, the, the, the mechanics, as we used to call them, they're called technicians nowadays. Uh, I mean, that was a very big part of it. The car, I mean, I, I once described the MGB as a bit of a tractor, which I'll probably get things thrown at me. But it was uh, so <laughs> well prepared. The preparation of the cars was a hell of a lot to do with them because they weren't the fastest or the highest tech cars in the world, both Mini and MG. And, but the boys at Abingdon were, I mean, what a team. What a, what a great honour it was for me to drive for that team.